are here at the 2020 Vision Executive Summit in beautiful Austria, and I'm here talking with Stefan Redenberger with ADVA, um, and we're going to talk about optical networks. Uh, good, to, good to see you today. Thank you, Sterling. Good seeing you. Good to be here. A uh, lot going on um, in the industry right now in optics. Uh, why don't we start with uh, ADVA's take on, on the high-speed market. Uh, I know uh, you have the introduction of the Teraflex products getting to 1.2 terabits in a, in a module. Um, what, you know, what's, what's the uptake, what's going on with, with Teraflex and, and uh, the industry? Well, it's certainly a very interesting and uh, dynamic part of the market. I would say right now the industry is in a race towards the Shannon limit. Um, seems like we're on two tracks, so there's the more vertically integrated vendors and then there's the open ecosystem players like ourselves. 2018, there was a lot of market share gain on a 400 gigabit per wave solution. This year, I think it's time for those 600 gig waves and the 1200 gig super channels to come out or 1.2 terabit, as you said. Mm -hmm. So we launched the product last year, started to do some trials. Now we're in the commercial ramp up. Uh, we have now six paying customers for the product. And um, as I said, I think right now, the technology that is available today is already giving you a lot of bang for the buck, spectral efficiency, flexibility on the client side that is unprecedented. It'll be interesting to see how much more improvement is now still possible by going to 800 or other higher baud rates um, because you're not improving the spectral efficiency anymore. And therefore, I think it comes down to the bill of material, the flexibility, product quality, et cetera, going forward. But it's, it's been a lot of excitement in that space, and we're happy to be in the, in the leading position. It's a lot here. of interest shipments going now, commercial revenue being booked. Yes, so I guess, I mean, the volume could always be higher, mm -hmm. obviously, but That's the new. number of customers that have looked at it is phenomenal. The number of customers that are starting to buy it is very promising. And what I'm personally very excited about, it's not just the DCI application where this type of technology is starting to play. Also the telco infrastructure seems to be going down a path of going open, mm. upgrading optical line systems by just having a newer generation and better terminal uh, running over an older line system. Right, so you brought up open, you know, one of, so high speed is one of the major trends we're tracking, but also uh, open and disaggregated systems and white box, which are kind of three terms that tend to be lumped together. Uh, I know Adva's pioneered quite a bit in open um, and even has dabbled in white box. What's, what's your take on the, the white box disaggregation open systems um, developments? So in the, in the optical domain, I, I guess I can say proudly or maybe not proudly that Adva's always been very open. I think it has to do with the size of our company and the fact that we always had to interwork with other players, the switching and routing guys, etc. We've always been very open to alien wavelengths, to having long-reach optics feeding out of data center switches or routers over our line system. And that DNA and that history has continued in our product roadmap and development. Um, I think white box has a place in the world, but maybe less so in optical transport. So I think in optical transport, I would say disaggregation is mainly separating the terminal mm -hmm. from the line system. As I mentioned, I think the new generation terminals running over older generation line systems, some really promising results. Line systems that were designed on the old ITU grid with 50 or 100 gigahertz space, designed for 10 gigabit on a wave, are now running at 200, even 300 gig on a wave. That's, that's incredible uh, in terms of the capacity upgrade without forklifting the line system. But also new generation line systems that now can take well, I mean, we've been working with Infi and the PAM4 optics. In the future, there will be other interesting optical solutions coming directly out of the switch into the line system. So the optical vendor community, I think, has a real opportunity in just slicing and, and mm -hmm. working in that system more, more openly and more, more into working across the different, different Right, companies. open systems, interoperability, but not necessarily for optics, not necessarily driving all the way to that white box model. I think there's a lot of confusion still on. on We've on been that. guilty ourselves of mm -hmm. playing in the white box uh, conversation with optical terminals, but I think there's so much response from the vendor community to building these compact WDM boxes mm -hmm. 
that do exactly what the customers want. Um, so going to white box in this domain, where a lot of the transmission is still analog in nature, seems to be not bringing enough benefits to invest a significant amount of time and energy there. Lower end technology in the context of cell side gateways, sure, for example, sure. totally different story. Absolutely. So mass market, high, high volume needed. You want it cheap, you want to have an open supply chain. Mm -hmm. I think that's where disaggregating hardware from the software makes a lot more sense. All right, last topic, hard to discuss anything these days without talking about 5G. Uh, 5G and optics, is there for Advent, is there a revenue opportunity in, in 5G uh, optically? So yes, there is. I mean, we always got to curb the enthusiasm there, especially from the investor side, because 5G ultimately is an infrastructure that will be predominantly built by the uh, uh, telco community, and so there's not an unlimited amount of capex available to do that. Mm -hmm. But technologically, 5G, the architecture, really includes everything that we have been investing in over the last five years. So you could be very bold and say a 5G architecture is an optical network with radio heads at the end. So there will be front hall, back hall, mid hall solutions that are needed. I mentioned our activity in the disaggregated cell side gateway environment where you have a bare metal switch with our operating system on top. We're doing a lot of work with TIP in that environment. And one area that I really particular get very excited about is the synchronization technology. So in that space, we've seen a lot of RFPs over the last few 18, 24 months. Our win rate's been quite phenomenal. And uh, I guess you can only do a true and proper 5G when the synchronization, the timing is right. So that is definitely a, an additional area of growth and profitability for us. And when I look back a step in terms of what's the model going for with 5G, mm -hmm. what I think is also positive for us and maybe the industry as a whole, um, I believe the 5G architecture will be moving a little bit more to a wholesale model than, than the 4G. So that means it's no longer about end-to-end -end solutions, but having the right front haul, back haul, timing, those ingredients, edge compute, and these are all things that we do well. All right, good. Well, uh, lots going on at ADVA, lots to keep us all busy. So um, great catching up with you. Thank you for your time all and right. uh, the good conversation. Thanks, Stefan.